All right, we're back. And now just to get some more questions out of Doc. So, what were you doing in 1931 anyway? Oh, nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out-of-print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, mm. solving a historical mystery or two. <laughs> the usual. usual. Yeah, usual stuff. You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. Well, it's usual for him. unusual universe, Marty. Oh, if you think that this universe is weird, trust me, there are tons of other universes out there that are even crazier. Look, Doc, just be surprised if you don't come across any mysterious gold chains that go right up into the sky. If you do, then, yeah, you're going to be in some major league trouble. I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display is on the fritz. It is? So how did you find me? Detective I found work. one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein took it from her. He did? How strange. Heidi almost never attacks people. Not without a good reason, anyway. Hmm. Well, what exactly happened to her? I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display is on the fritz. Oh, it is? So how did you find me? I found one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein took it from her. He did? How strange. Ivy almost never attacks people. Not without a good reason, anyway. Alright, well anyways, what am I supposed to do with this number? How do you remember this phone number after 50 years? It's a mnemonic for a dirty punchline I learned when I was 12. Ew. Now, get to the soup kitchen and find out where I am. I'm just gonna... N I'm not gonna ask. Why'd you wind up in jail in 1931 anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. It's horrible. Ooh. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. Well, yeah, at least you have your priorities, Doc. Just be grateful you didn't have yourself a freaking concussion. If you think that 1931 insane asylums are bad, try 1931 medicine. Anyways, about Edna. What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes, now I remember. Ask Edna, the etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. Oh boy. She just about lost her mind. <laughs> that would explain a lot. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Marty, when this whole thing is over, why don't you go and uh, swing by the 60s and just see Edna go completely Google for Goga Buffs? Uh, that would have been something. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I, I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986 after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. I think we gotta go and pay your alimony in 2023. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. Yeah, really tactful, dude. Alright, might as well swing by the soup kitchen and see what's in here. McFly. Oh, Biff? another. Oh. Kid. Grandpa. That's Mr. Tannen to you. Brother. Already. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. Shut if up. one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Would you? 
Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on Look the suit, the... kid. Well? Well, Look what? Talking, punk. What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Uh, yeah, don't worry, I'm sure Squire will give you a new one. You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey, anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. <laughs> all right, well, anyway, since this here is a cafe and... I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Well, now you're concerned about other people's timelines, Marty. Where is this? <clears throat> uh, okay. Hey, um, never mind. Forget it. Oh, you want to go and get yourself some soup? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I'm... Kitchens for management only, Rummy. No oh. soup for you! Oh, great. It's only the 30s, and yeah. Kid, uh, kid apparently hired one of the soup... Uh, kid apparently hired the soup Nazi. Brown results. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Oh, get out to just grill him on that. Well, yeah, I mean, again, this is back when he was a teenager, so there's inevitably going to be some sort of gap or two. Looks anyway. like these pipes go into the basement. Wonder why. Well, probably just part of the plumbing or something. All right, Doc. Psst, Doc. Marty, how goes the escape plan? Let's see. You worked at the courthouse. So, according to the British guy on the phone, you're working at the courthouse. Of course. In the summer of 31, my father made me work as a junior clerk. It doesn't sound like any fun. I hated every minute of it. My father was, oh, strict. In any event, you should head over to the courthouse right away and introduce yourself to me. Let's see, what exactly does a law clerk do? What does a law clerk do anyway? Horrible paper shuffling task, but that's not important. Get yourself to the courthouse and find me. All right, well, oh yeah. That's who I bumped into at the soup kitchen. My grandfather. No! Oh, not don't again! Worry. I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good! I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. As oh, opposed to. Right. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. All right. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, Oop. if Biff will be born in 1938, and kid will be in prison. As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. Yeah. It's a busy three hours. No kidding. I'm surprised he even made it out for five minutes. Hang in there, Doc. Again, Marty. Bad choice of words. Alright, let's just go and find young Emmett. Do, 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 do. Uh, Einstein? What's up? Hey, how you doing, Einie? Hey, how you doing, Einie? 
Brown Estate, Klondike 51038. Hmm. Okay, then. Up, two, up, three, up, up, up. Okay. Whoa! Don't touch those! These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Found him. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, uh, Harry Callahan. Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. You're not getting away from me that easy, little twerp. Pay multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than... Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. What you doing? What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? Not cool. That's how important it is. Let's see. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Callahan, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Yeah. Every morning. Well, let me tell you something. If the law doesn't work, what good is it? It's crazy. All right, fine then, punk. When are you going to be finished? So, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before 8, my Pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Mm -hmm. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bones connected to the I got nothing. thigh bone? Amazing. Okay, fine. <laughs> All right. You got a little secret, huh? I know you got a rocket in your pocket. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Or do we take H to stand for her? Yeah, it's gonna take a while to get through to this guy. Just give me five minutes in love with him. I'm singing like a canary. Till next time. Just uh, if you got if you got a secret, let at least one person know. You don't have to go it alone. Later.